um, we had to wait for um, David and Vernon to join before we recorded. So, oh, sorry, sorry. I was just kidding. Um, okay, so, um, uh, so, so next week we're going to share. Um, you're going to share your screens, or sometimes better yet, if you upload it to YouTube or whatever, um, and then. Uh, Tim or I can share, but well, we want to see what you're working on. Um, and it, it's a work in progress. We realize it. And someone hey, like David, hey, talk to you later, Brian. I'm going to mute you, David. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh oh, I froze maybe. No. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, you were just st very still, Grant. I thought everything froze. Um, yes, uh, the uh, the best thing to do, I think, because uh, realistically, if you share your screen, you're going to get like the Zoom lag and it's going to be hard for us to see. We're going to use our best opinions. But if you want the absolute best, export your project and uh, you can send us a link to view. Uh, uh, you could upload it to YouTube. You could get sign up for a free Dropbox account. You could put it on your Google um what's the google asset Pro google right. drive um and send us a link that way we can view it um this way you know vimeo any any sharing program uh will give us a more accurate view or your or if you think hey uh i'm i'm gonna share my screen go for it um just know that uh we'll be like well i think it was great but it kind of like lagged and cut out here i don't know if it's a mistake or if it's this and you just be like oh no no i i have that fixed or whatever so yeah it, it's it's more beneficial i think if you share a link and youtube is so easy show it in the class and then take down the link so that that you don't no one else can see it um you can make it private and give us a a um code to watch it if you want, but um, it that that's the easiest and most effective way because um, Zoom just can't handle the the video. It would get choppy. So um, we want to see whatever it is you're working on, and it can be some intense thing like David's, you know, working on his um, film for the showcase, or it can be you know ten seconds of something that you you know some little bit that you've started. Um, so that's next week. Um, and then the week after that, we're going to do color correction and, um, uh, Tim will start talking about that in premiere. Um, and I'm assuming that people still want a lesson in, uh, Da Vinci on color correction. There were a couple people who said, yes, I think so. Okay. I think any, any, uh, information is great okay i don't know if we should probably do that on a separate class than the color in um, premiere correct uh probably i think uh, two different options would be good yeah okay sounds good any uh, questions um is there any chance of getting after effects a session on after effects oh absolutely that's uh we're doing audio then titling, then color, then green screen, um, and then After Effects. And we'll, then After Effects will be, uh, we'll cover lots of um, things. Actually today, um, Sophie joined us an hour early and Tim spent uh, an hour talking about After Effects with her. But um, if you want more of that, it's, it's coming. For sure. Uh, I think uh, it would be a mistake if we don't talk about the extra credit opportunity grant. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, um, the film and, and television program made a feature film, which is going to be in movie theaters. Tomorrow night is the premiere um, at, at seven o'clock, but it also plays at nine o'clock. Um, and then it's playing on Saturday at four and then at six. And then it's playing on Monday night and Tuesday night um, at seven o'clock. On Tuesday night, it's half off. So if you are um, pinching pennies, um, you can do that. That's the last night it's gonna run. Um, so that it's a film called uh, On the Couch. Um, and Tim wrote and directed a segment. It's really funny, by the way. 
Um, probably a lot of people are going to say it's their favorite. I don't know. Don't don't oversell it. Grant, of course, wrote several sections. No, and, just two. Um, and uh, and uh, other GAF, former GAF students and uh, any current? No. Nope. I think they're all former now. Yeah. All f GAF alumni wrote and directed. So we have, what, six directors? Seven. Seven. Seven directors. And um, it's a series of what you would call vignettes or basically, you know, 10 to 15 minute segments uh, that all piece together to tell a much bigger story. But, um, uh, you know, it, it's uh, really, I think, interesting and fun. And um, if you go show us you bought a ticket, um, what, how many extra credits are you offering, Grant? In this 200. Class? Whoa. That's 20% hey, of your final grade. Robert, I told you he'd give more than I would give. <laughs> so. Yep. So you, and, and you can meet the filmmakers and the actors who are going to be there. Yeah. Uh, uh, Friday at seven should be mo really fun. It should uh, looking at uh, what's cool, Grant, is I don't know if you've been looking, but you can see how many tickets have been sold already. If you go in and try to I can buy see the ticket. seats that have been sold. Yeah. I tried to I'm buy some more for some people and it, it, it's getting tight. Pretty full. It was at over 90 when I lo last looked. So I'm sure it's more than that now so um, but there are a lot of other screenings um, yeah a lot of other screenings we can't make it uh totally worth uh checking out we of course are <laughs> partial to it as the creator so um lots of fun kind of cool to see what fellow filmmakers have made that's why the showcase is so cool because you can see what um you know other gab students have done and some watch some amazing films so um Anyways, uh, come hang out with us. Friday at seven tomorrow, if you can be there, if not all weekend long and Monday and Tuesday. So uh, extra credit opportunities, 200 points. I think that's worth a, a movie ticket, especially at Tuesday. This is of course in Morgan Hill at Cinelux Theater. Right. Can we show you the proof of the, like the ticket for the extra credit and everything? Yeah, just take a picture of yourself holding it. Or if you go to the premiere, go get an autograph from one of the actors or filmmakers. Um, we'll, I'll even give you. I'll some. do this in the picture. Well, I mean, I mean, if we're at the premiere and you're at the premiere, you're probably going to know that we were there. <laughs> so. Yeah, but you need to take a picture to prove it. We might not remember. <laughs> we'll forget. Yeah. That's uh, all right. I we'll be did. mobbed by our, by our adoring public. It'll be hard to. <laughs> and we'll be drinking champagne and such. So. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Wait, we're before the movie? Well, okay, afterwards, but you know the entire it, thing. <laughs> it'll kill some brain cells. Yeah. So yeah, I I would I would just take a picture or save your ticket or whatever, and um and, and you how if you're willing to get on screen like the brave David and Vernon, you could hold up your ticket and that um in a Zoom meeting, and that would be enough. Yeah, that works too. Do we have to get a picture and an autograph, or can it just be an autograph? Okay. Yeah, so. yeah we just we just want to make sure you go. But and it's kind picture of sure cool. of the autograph. <laughs> we yeah. have some really great actors who are coming, so um, you get to see these um, people who are on the screen. So yeah, it's kind of cool um, to to meet them and and talk with them. Does it have to be every single actor or just no, two? Just one? No, no, just one. Okay. Yeah. We're trying to make it easy, not difficult. Yeah. Just going is if you take a picture of yourself like with the screen, uh, that would work too. Yeah. Oh, as like as like the how do I say this? As the actor's picture or like just is that just part of like one of them we one of the requirements you're there okay as long as we can tell you're there yeah like all right so i'm here i would like what if i just bought the ticket and just never showed up to it that's like, hey i got the that. ticket <laughs> yeah we want you well, to experience put out the ticket and go stand out in front of the theater and, and uh you could trick us that way 
And he'd be, we'd be like, oh, what was your favorite part, uh, Robert? And he'd be like, oh, yours, Tim. And I'd be like, oh, thanks. Good. Uh, 200 points. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 probably, I'll probably, probably end up going tomorrow. And it's like, what, what's your favorite? I mean, which, um, oh, well, tell us more. What, what did you like? Oh, I liked it all. It was great. My favorite was when the credits happened at the end. Uh, Finally go home. <laughs> I, I was surprised. That couch was uh, really good. <laughs> uh, really, you just need proof of that we were there. And then pretty much. Yeah, to get extra credit, proof that you were there. Okay. Plus, Grant's gonna be at every screening and he's gonna like he has a checklist, so he'll know if uh, you showed up or not. He'll just be if you don't see him, he's probably up in the booth. Um, right, Grant. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I watched um, seven movies over the weekend. Wow, that's great. Yeah, nobody was one. Watched. Oh, what'd you think of nobody? I liked. I loved it. I thought it was great. Ah, it was really fun, right? Yeah, I thought it was really. That clever. bus fight scene Speak was pretty good. Speaking of editing, the editing in the beginning of that movie is great. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, yeah. The story and of his, the monotony of his life by the way it was cut together. The the metro pass, the honk of the horn, the you know the the repetition, um, all of that stuff was great. That's um, that's the editing. That you know, you yeah. I know you talk a lot about how you think the editing of uh, of a film is. <laughs> Here, let's one see, of the let's, most important aspects. Let me um, see if I can find that scene. We can take a look at it. Yeah, it, it was really good. Um, I'm trying to remember <laughs> some of the others that I watched. Uh, Diana really wanted to see Marry Me based on Julianne's recommendation. And we saw that. And Oh, what do you think of that? I liked it. I actually, I didn't expect to, but I did. That's uh, what Jules said too. Um, and I kind of went in skeptical, but um, oh, I saw the last duel. Um, oh yeah, what'd you think of that? Yeah, I, I thought it was really good. I really liked the three perspectives. Yeah, that was cool. Um, oh man, that was I love that. I love that a lot. Yeah, I, is that nominated for anything? No. no. It can't. You know, it came out at like the beginning of the year, so right in the wrong space. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to find. I don't know if I can find this. Uh, I don't think this montage scene's on YouTube yet. I could point my uh, laptop at my t television because I have it recorded. Yeah, all all of the uh, all the clips are like him, like the pre, like even before that montage. It's the um, uh, you know where he's sitting in the uh, interrogation room with a kitten. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like, I, I like that too. The, the way it started with the end, and then you discover you know, why he's sitting there. And um, yeah, I thought it was well done. I also thought he was kind of an interesting character. Um, you, you, on a, you don't expect that guy, a guy who looks like that, um, very kind of slight, um, older, you know, wrinkly. I, I, he didn't even seem very coordinated, it, but you, and then I also liked one of the things that uh, in movies so often is the, the, the protagonist is kind of almost invincible and yet he gets his butt kicked. Yeah, he also, you know, beats five guys, but you know, on the, yeah. the bus scene, I mean, he's bleeding. He, he's he get, I don't want to spoil things too much for anyone who, who plans to see it, but um, I don't know. I, I, I liked that element about it, that he's not an invincible character that, um yeah I, I was reading something where they call this um they call this genre of movie kind of like uh they call it dad action um because it's like john wick where it's like just a good action movie and you kind of like jack reacher or something like that where it's like oh just a man on a mission type of thing where uh just a bunch of fights and yeah he realistically was just like 
pushed over the edge, right? Uh, to take up an old life. Uh, the ending alone, Grant, like the. <laughs> well, I love his dad with the shotgun. Oh, no oh, spoilers, no spoilers. Uh, but yeah, no, like who would have known that that actor would be an action star ever, right? Like yeah. uh, one of my all time favorites from one of my all time favorite movies. I don't want to say anything, but. Uh, Really great uh, conclusion, kind of rid ridiculous movie. And for me, the 90 minute went down so quick and smooth. Like that was just an enjoyable watch. That was something that like sometimes movies, even if it's a good movie, like I, I, I loved it. I recently just watched, um, oh man. Uh, While you're thinking, um, I'm gonna interrupt. So you said yeah. 90 minutes. One of the bits of advice that Tim's going to give you constantly on your work this semester is make it tighter. You know, cut out the the fluff or the unnecessary material. Um, th and that's what this film did. It really quick images tell the story. So sorry to interrupt, but uh, no, 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 no worries. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of make it faster, make it quicker, make it get to the point type of thing. Yeah. And I'm not opposed to it. Like the last duel I absolutely loved. And I feel like that movie was like two and a half hours long. Um, and I wish there was more, honestly, I loved, uh, the Rashomon kind of element to that where you see the same events from different perspectives and it fills in and the best part Grant is like you're never really sure who is right right because like, they're kind of telling the story from oh I, I believe the wife well, at least when it came to a lot yeah, of more, yeah more so yeah that, for sure but also it's like all based off of historical documentation, right? So um, yeah, I definitely, uh, I definitely feel like she was more the uh, side to be on, right? The more trustworthy narrator. Yeah. I, do, I love how like the thing that they do is you see it from different perspectives. And I love how much Matt Damon's character changes from the first section to the later sections. And, and boy, he got he becomes a, a very I mean, even the way he looked, that haircut and the scar. The, the yeah, the way he changes, like it's so good. Like it's very clever storytelling. So um yeah. Hey, look who's joining us, Joseph. My bad, just got done from a production meeting. We were I was gonna join earlier. Thanks for joining. Um Joe is now um, in film school down in LA and um, he wanted to join. I think he wants to share um, a bit of his latest uh, cut of his movie. Is that what you were gonna share or? Uh, no, I just wanted to join to, um, oh, oh, cool. look at Tim over here with my background. I just wanted to join just to see how everything's going and I haven't really had any time. We've been doing so many other projects, uh, but now I'm done with the, all that stuff. So I'm just start knocking it out. Good. Uh, April 15th is your, is your deadline. Yeah. Yeah, it should, uh, yeah I, I'll have it done way before then, but. Are you going to uh, get it color corrected? Yeah. Chris is color corrected. So okay. um, we talked yes, yesterday or the day before yesterday. He's a busy uh, guy, so you got to get on his schedule. Yeah, he he's to fight um, uh, David Butterfield for him too. <laughs> I'm good with my words. Come on, David. We're good. <laughs> I'll get Chris. No, no we, we were Chris talking. Is also doing "Do Not Disturb." He's doing the whole film. So yeah, I heard about that, and he's doing a documentary with um, uh, Brendan Grady. Grady, yeah. yeah. So how's class been? What are you guys, what are you teaching today? Audio today. Um, mm -hmm. Grant, you said you watched seven movies, but you only, I only remember three of them. Um, Let me, I got to remember. So, oh, uh, some Limitless was one. Um, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago, so I bought it and I really like that one. I want uh, they that were, there, were, there were a bunch. I can't remember them all. All right. I watched three seasons of a TV show uh, over the weekend, so man not as i can't really put it on my letterbox but uh um what we do in the shadows this is the spin-off tv series of the 
Taika Waititi um, mockumentary starring Jermaine Clements. Um, have you seen What We Do in the Shadows, Grant? Ooh, that would be a fun one uh, to teach. Uh, it is a faux documentary about a bunch of vampires living together in a house, and they're is all that really. One that, that's from like Norway, or no? It's actually, I believe, it's either Australian or New Zealand. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. I I think I even own that, but I haven't seen it. I I read a lot about it. Um... And FX has produced three seasons of this show. And it I caught up uh, this week. The first was a movie, right? Yeah, the first is a movie. Um, uh, let me show you. Verizon Unlimited is going ultra. Here. I have the ability to share, yes? Yep. Oh, uh, wait. Maybe this is the TV show. Let me. Hold on. Yes, here we go. Perfect. All right. I don't think I shared my audio, which is what I always do. Yeah, did not. Okay. Now we're seeing After Effects. How about now? Good? Oh, yep. Right. Let's go, let's go. It's been like this the whole time, Deacon on dishes and it still hasn't moved in five years. You're a cool guy, but you're not pulling your weight in the flat. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear that I'm cool. No, that's not the point though. Yeah, you're missing no, I the know. Point. Not a I know. flat meeting about how cool you are. When you get three vampires in a flat, obviously there's going to be a lot of tension. <laughs> Viago was an 18th century dandy. <laughs> A ghost cat. Vladislav is a bit of a pervert. This is my torture chamber. Deacon's like the young bad boy of the group. I'm supposed to pay rent, but I don't. The trouble with being a vampire is you have to be invited in. Come into the bar, please. Four dollars is walking. Will you invite us in? We need some fresh blood. Hi, my name is Nick. I've been a vampire for two months. <laughs> My friend Rich is a bouncer. He'll invite us in. Gentlemen, you are most welcome. <laughs> Nick is so much fun. I'm a vampire. Vampire! Vampire! Such a dick. Oh. Nick, why don't you use the front door? You want to draw attention to this house, hmm? You've got a whole documentary crew following you around. You let a vampire hunt into our I don't house. Wait a minute, I just got my email. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm kill you! I'm already dead! Not eat the camera guy, maybe one camera guy. Turn the tape. Use your legs. Wow. Ah, what the f did he do? Hey, that was. Don't swear. What are we? We're not swears. Not swears. <laughs> When you're a vampire, you become very sexy. Ow! Funny. And where, where, what is that on? Yeah. Uh, well, okay, so that is a movie. Um, and I don't know where it's streaming. Well, that's the movie, not the series. The series, uh, the series is kind of an update to that. It's following different vampires. So it's not Jermaine Clement and Taika Waititi, right? So, uh, um, I mean, you probably recognize Jermaine Clement from movies and Taika is the one who directed um, uh, Thor Ragnarok and uh, Jojo Rabbit. Um, 
so uh, what we do in the shadows, let me just show you the update and then we'll talk about it. Um, here we go. So I've got, let's see. Let me My just essay written. mute the, the ad. Sure. It's night. It's nightfall. He awakens. Very cool, Master. Very scary. Thank you. Nadja, Laszlo. Yeah. Yes? Can you come downstairs for a second, please? The problems with living with other vampires are the vampires I have chosen to stay with. I wanted to talk about general hygiene in the cell. How not? Last night, there were all these people down there half drunk. Well, where did they find the alcohol? No, they were half drunk. They've been half drunk. If you've got something to say, then damn well say it. It's not hygienic! <laughs> Nando is like a big turkey. Cannot pay with that. I'm so sorry. So you can't be throwing ancient coins at me. Guillermo, the credit card stab this man. Guillermo is my familia. I'm not a killer. I find people who are easy to kill. Are you virgins? I don't see how that's relevant. Oh. I'm killing you, baby. Oh, that's werewolf piss. Two werewolves. <laughs> Colin, what are you doing in here? This is my bedroom. My name is Colin Robinson. Hi, Deb. And I am a energy vampire. We either bore you with a long conversation. Hey, Don. Or. Don. We enrage you. Something terrible is coming! <laughs> Master, this is pretty macabre. <laughs> Got my cake caught in the door. Well, yank it out. So, uh, what's great about it is it's the mockumentary style, like The Office or whatever. And um, uh, I, I have to say, the TV show was even better than the movie because they have that energy vampire, which is a really funny concept. And he's like just not a normal vampire. And he bores you and no one likes to be around him and he lives with them and he can even like feed off of them so he's just always telling them like the most asinine and boring stories and uh you know they they all have like names that are like ancient his name is like colin robinson and it's like oh hey colin robinson uh and, and you know it's, it's good i recommend it highly recommend there's uh it's on fx i watched it on hulu uh 10 episodes per season and uh, for a comedy, they actually have a really interesting like serial element that like goes from season to season. So uh, there's a cliffhanger in the last season. I'm like really interested to find out. Uh, so uh, great stuff. Lots of cameos too. Uh, uh, let's just say a, a famous vampire hunting uh, actor who played a comic book hero might be in the first season. Um, um, Wesley Snipes. <laughs> All right, let's let's get into editing today. Unless anybody else wants to talk about anything else, or I can show you some cool, other cool stuff. But that's a highly re high recommend from me. Uh, what we do in the shadows, I think, is a three or four. I, I actually haven't seen the movie in a long time, but uh, ooh, look at that! Toy Story Three, Grown Ups, Sorcerer's Apprentice. Wow. Despicable Me 3D, Inception, Eclipse, Ramona and B. Oh, wow. That is, that is an all timer. What? How old is that? Okay. Well, <laughs> looking at Despicable Inception, I mean, isn't that 2010? I was trying to get my extra credit. I'm at the theater. Oh, oh yeah. Look, oh, Where's good my job. Tickets? <laughs> 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 Here are my tickets. Oh, they're not showing up. 
That's good. Hey, you see. Come to the after party, right? <laughs> yeah, I will be there. Good. All right. I'm going to open up Premiere. Uh, Tommy, uh, uh, is your film starting, Grant? Seven is the premiere, and then there's another screening at nine. Is it going to run all weekend? Yeah, uh, not on Sunday for some reason. They're going to have uh, four and, and seven on Saturday, and then seven on Monday and Tuesday. Okay, cool. So not, not on Sunday. That's interesting. All right, uh, I'm going to open up just a project that I have here already open. You can pull up any of your projects, but let's talk about the green elements here. Looking at our timelines here, we can see that there's green and blue really represented by uh, the different timelines. And remember, I always talked about right here in your timeline uh, or sequence, there is a main bar that is the division. And what does that, uh, that mean? That means that anything below this line is audio and anything above is video. Uh, more specifically, if we take a look, we can even see uh, this clip that I dragged in here. We can see right here, this is our, our video element. And I can, I'm actually gonna just click and drag so we can see it bigger. And this is our um, uh, audio element. And what I'm looking at here is a visual representation of, um, of what audio is, right? These are called waveforms. And, and so what I'm able to see is I can, just by looking at it, I can see where someone's talking, where so, no one's talking. So if I go here and I hit play, there's no talking. But if I go right here, entertainment, celebrity chefs, cooking demonstrations, I can see, okay, there's talking there. But also, what else am I looking at when I'm looking at here? Well, uh, when it's green like this, it means it's a stereo pair. So you brought it in uh, as a left and a right channel. So this is what is called stereo. Uh, in um, And look visually, what I'm looking at, we can see that it's divided equally here. Um, and what does that mean? It means if I take a clip like this and look at it here, just drag this out. Can you all hear the chipmunks in the background of my Zoom? Uh, my kids are watching the chipmunks in the other room. And they're, uh, sounds like they're singing Uptown Funk right now. Um, which, boy, if you haven't lived until you heard that. So, uh, sorry. So we're looking at a stereo pair here. And what do we notice that's different between this one and that one? Well, specifically, we can see that this one actually is a lot louder because we can see the waveforms are much more towards the top, whereas this one has varied waveforms. But also, we can see that this is a stereo pair, which means that on the left channel and on the right channel are exactly the same audio. So what does that mean? That means if you're listening on a headset or with speakers, if we played this, this clip, only out of the left earbud or the left, um, uh, the left uh, speaker would audio come out, whereas this one, left and right would come out. Now, uh, why is this good to know? Well, maybe you want to do a thing where you're doing kind of surround sound, where the, the audio is intending only come out of the right or the left. Well, the big thing I'm telling you about this is be, so that you know not to do it unintentionally. Nothing is worse. I have watched projects where I'm like, hey, there's no sound to this. And then I realized, well, I'm watching it with only one earbud in. Uh, and so then when I put the other earbud in, I'm like, oh, this is all just pan to the right. Um, so that means it's improperly mixed. At the very least, we want to have equal sounds on both headsets. So in case, I mean, ideally, everyone's watching our projects in a the theater or watching it with two headsets on. But uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes I just have one earbud on because I'm doing something else at the same time. Um, all right. Uh, so we can see that it's a visual representation of our audio right here. And as we come in, we, we know a couple of things. First and foremost, we know that our projects, anything that has that purple and green right here, um, uh, purple and green means that the clip has audio. So 
realistically, we can see that this is my B-roll. And if I hit play, I can hear that it's just general whatever uh, the camera captured. It could be background noise. So realistically, if I click and drag this in, and I drag it in, it's going to come in as a pair of audio. It's going to come in. I'm going to zoom in. We're going to see the clip, and we're going to notice that, hey, it has audio right here. Um, and specifically, I'm just going to drag this out so we can see it better. I can tell that because this is blue instead of green, it means it is a mono track. And mono track means it's just one channel. And as it is, it will, so when you export it, it will split into two channels. So when I hit play, mono specifically, uh, and I double click up here, we can, we can visually see that our audio clip our waveforms are only on the left channel. Well, what if, how do I get it to be on both the left channel? Also, another way we can visually tell, if I hit play and I'm looking at my waveform, my audio meter right here, and audio meter is important. It tells us where and how our audio um, uh, is going to be played right here, right? Um, so our audio meter shows not only our levels, um, but it, but it also indicates that look only coming out of this one channel, the left channel, uh, and I have the right channel. So how do I fix this? Well, there's an easy fix. I'm going to go into effects. I'm going to go into audio effects, and we have all these different audio effects. Uh, I believe it's yep in special, and then there's going to be two. There's going to be fill left with right. And there's going to be fill right with left. So what does that mean? That means I'm going to choose one of these. So who knows which one I should use? So essentially what it's going to do is it's going to make a stereo pair. And it's going to fill the, we need to fill the right channel with the left. So we need to choose fill right with left. So I'm just going to drag and drop that onto my clip. And now when we hit play, we can see that our uh, audio is uh, now a stereo pair, which means it is perfectly um, uh, good like that. Now, why is this important to know? Well, specifically when you're gonna shoot a movie and maybe you're gonna use multiple mics, you're gonna use multiple inputs, um, you're gonna use a lav microphone and a boom microphone, and your audio is gonna come in with multi, multi channels. Well, all, all the channels are gonna be mono and maybe you're gonna wanna fill it so it's on both left and right. So this is a good, important one to know. Now, looking at my clip here and looking at uh, my clip here and the audio, let's say, you know, it's at minus 27. It's kind of low. So how do I adjust the, the audio? Well, we can see that the big difference, or not really, uh, um, we can look at our audio and video here. Let me drag this down. There's my audio and video. And I have my video here my audio here, and we have these lines. And these lines actually represent two different things. Uh, in audio, the line represents volume. In video, it represents opacity. So if I look at my clip here, and I drag this all the way down, it turns to black. If I drag it halfway, it's kind of gray. And in fact, uh, we can really represent uh, that it is an opacity by, uh, I'm going to go to my project, I'm going to click here, I'm going to say new, and I'm going to do a color mat. I'm going to say OK. Of course, I'm going to pick some Shrek colored thing. I'm going to say OK, Shrek. I'm going to take my Shrek color and put it under here. And now we can see, because of the opacity, that the green is way more dominant. Um, but let's pull Shrek down. Let's open up back our opacity. And we can know, it's even telling me as they go up and down, you can see there's a number that comes up and that's gonna be what the opacity level is. So at 100, we're not gonna see any green, right? But if I scrub down to 75, we're gonna get a green tint over there. So that is opacity. I say that only because that's what the line on video represents. The line here on audio 
is going to be our volume. Um, and uh, we, can, we can adjust volume two way, uh, multiple ways in, in Premiere. Number one, I'm just gonna click and drag everything up. And I drag it all the way to 15, per, uh, the highest I can go is to, uh, I'm gonna add 15 dB, which is decibels. So I'm adding 15 decibels to this. Um, uh, 15 decibels also means that basically I'm amplifying the audio and I'm doing it digitally. Um, and so that's like, you know, when we add, when we scale into our um, uh, video and it starts to get murky or grainy or we bring up the, the color, um, essentially we're affecting what was originally recorded. So ideally our audio is recorded at a decent level so that we don't have to add a lot of volume. But fortunately, if we add digital volume, the amount of gain, which is dig digital disruption, is gonna be less than our audio. At least it's gonna be less noticeable and there's ways that we can adjust around it. But realistically, um, we can see where this is at zero. We see that my audio is bouncing around minus 27. And if I go up 15 dB, now everything's bouncing around minus 12. Um, so great, I made it louder. Realistically, there's no sound other than background noise. But how do I make it louder than that? Let's say, I, hey, it's still too quiet. I need to make it louder. Uh, well, I'm going to go and I'm going to click on my audio here. And we can see the audio visual, visualization here. And then I can click on effect control. And I am going to see that my whole volume, instead of having motion or uh, opacity that like video has, we're looking at volume now. And we can, uh, instead of moving the, the um, line up and down, I can actually go and manually move this up and down. And what you note is I have my keyframes on now too. So I can actually lower the volume to minus infinity, raise the volume to plus 15 dB. And because I now have keyframes, let's make it plus and then let's go minus. And basically we can see that I have made a, uh, uh, we can see here that I basically made what's called a fade. And we're fading up our volume. So let's hit play and see. So that's basically you're turning up your volume from nothing to the highest amount you can go. Well, we can make it louder than that. And how do we do that? Well, we're going to add some effects. And this is a very basic effect uh, that we want to go in to. Uh, and it's going to be right here. Our main effect right here is volume. If we click and add a volume here, what I'm able to do is add another 15 dB. So that's going to make this clip even louder. So let's do 15. There we go. Have my keyframes off on that one. So now, when we're when we're at full volume here, we can see that the audio not only is bouncing now around the minus three, but anytime there's red, it means it's peaked. And the red is an indicator to tell us that, like, hey, our volume has reached a a really loud sound. And if it's not intentional, we're going to get to a thing where our audio is going to start to overmodulate. And that, what does that mean? That means that our volume is too loud, so much so that it's going to break our waveform. And our waveform is a natural up and down wave. And basically, when you start getting into overmodulation, it will disrupt your high highs. Um, your low and bass area might be good for a while. But have you ever recorded audio and it, and it all sounds kind of muffled and it's really loud? Well, that's because it's overmodulated or it was recorded poorly. So here is the one feature that I think is needed to know when you're recording audio. It's much easier to correct for low audio than it is to correct for overmodulated audio. You can bring the volume down. But if your waveform is overmodulated at the recording, you can never fix it. You basically will just need to re-record your audio. Whereas if you're if you have a low-level audio recording, you can bring it up and clean up the gain or the uh, uh, the 
hiss noise that's going to come with it. Um, much easier to fix that. So uh, always be a little more conservative with recording audio. Uh, Grant, have you experienced uh, overmodulated audio? Yeah, um, but I, I, I want to um, argue a little bit. You're absolutely right. It, um, if it if if it is overmodulated, it's in the red. That's really bad. I also feel that sometimes people uh, uh, overcorrect and they. Um, record at a lower level and then it's recording is a, a lot of noise with it so when you turn it up you're hearing a lot of other stuff so there is a kind of prime area um, I have found out that on the the zoom that we use for our our class productions um, keeping it in the yellow and the orange um, for dialogue is best yeah yeah, and definitely that's why a good skilled sound person is great on on your set because, um, uh, yeah, I, I I mean, don't you think it's easier to fix low level audio than high level audio though? When it's overmodulated, you can't rebuild it basically. Well, well I mean, it's unfixable when, if it's overmodulated. Um, so I, you, you want to record so that it's not peaking it's not oh, you want, yeah you want to record so that it's proper i'm just saying that uh um, but yeah um it, 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 hopefully you don't have to fix it is is the problem but um uh, under the volume too low can be a problem as well um tim so does premiere bundle all the layers together so for example when we show uh, when we film on um I'm sorry, when we record audio on the Zoom, we might have two, three, four, five, six mics recording at the same time. Um, and um, can you see all the different tracks um, or does it bundle them all together unless you open them up? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Check this out. Um, in fact, I, I we're a little jumping a little bit ahead, but... Um, uh, when we get into something that has multi layers. And, and um, so Joseph, you need to pay attention. And David, I know has done this. Why um, and then Alex, Alex this is- only grown in and around Dora, California. Sorry. That's because here at the Darla Cap, it's That's really true. only- Stop, it's really stop, only stop. Okay, there we go. Um, so yeah, so basically we're dealing with one channel right now, but eventually you're gonna have layers upon layers of sound effects of everything. And uh, when you get into it, then you can look here at what is called um, uh, uh, the uh, audio clip mixer. And what this allows you to do is actually, you can play well, through and be like, California. okay, I'm gonna bring up my house. Here at the Darla Capital, we have the perfect balance of so you can go and adjust accordingly uh, with your keyframes on, it'll add keyframes. So uh, realistically, when I am edited, this is what I look at when I'm done with the piece, uh, more so than anything. For me, when uh, my method of editing is I will go through, I will me mess with the audio as is. Um, you can see that I have raised, um, I have raised this up a level. I have also added the whole channel up uh, a level. You can control your channel uh, level as well. So that's everything on this channel is raised by nine volumes. Um, and then uh, I also have a music bed right here. Oh. I, I wasn't actually referring to, I mean, you might have a lot of sources um, or I think Premiere, you call them assets, where it'll be the dialogue, it'll be a Foley, it will be um, the music and other things. I was talking about um, when uh, you're recording um, dialogue with several different mics. So we often will have oh, okay, yeah. um, two or three um, mics per person. We'll have a lavalier, we'll have a shotgun, etc. And it's all comes together in one, um, you know, file. Um, 
And it's a real easy thing in Final Cut to separate them. And I actually separate them and then so that I can see that they're turned off or you know mixed a certain way. And I just don't know how Premiere does that. Right. They, oh. they load into separate channels. Yeah, they do. Automatically. Yes. I wish I had, uh, I might have one, let me see. Uh, I'm actually looking at it right now. <laughs> you have one like that? Yeah. Can we can you ask, share your screen and show us? Are you asking him to show us how to synchronize it to the clip? Is that what you're asking? No, him? he just no. like in Premiere, in F F After Effects, it comes in as one file and then you have to extract the audio. From oh, yeah. It. Yeah, in you'll Premiere, get the boom mic and then the two loud. We use three channels typically. Can you, uh, David, would you mind sharing your screen? Um, sure. How do I share the this one here? Share. Can you see that? Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. So show see how this us. got the three channels here. Yeah. So oh, everything. So show, that's how it show, comes, like like this right here. Show us in your bin. Oh, okay. Yeah. What, show us one of your audio files. So double click oh, on that. Hold on, I gotta. Yeah, I don't want to mess double up. Double click on it. Yeah, just double click on it so we can see it up in the preview, and then if you scroll down. in the preview, we can see I'm not sure how to scroll down on the preview. Okay, let's just drag and drop it onto uh, the timeline. You can just drag it from your bin. I thought we got three channels. I don't know why I'm only seeing one. Okay, is that one that's not? And then, yeah, that might that clip might just be done that, that's not. Yeah, that looks like a a stereo. Here, let me see if I can find one while you're looking. Is that, but that's what this is. That's what I was trying to show here. So, David, do you normally, when you edit that, do you normally um, take apart the clips before you put it in um, your sequence, or you do you edit it all off the timeline? I edit it on the timeline. Mm, yeah, that's what I. That's what I've been doing as well. Um, I'll throw all the the um, the audio files, or I'll throw all the audios on, and then mix and match to see which one is. Here we go. Here one just loaded. Yeah. See so yeah, how this is three channels. Mm -hmm. That's how that's how it pulls in. Yeah. Yeah, that's all but, most of mine are. And that's so You're we got boom, boom, boom is a channel one and or top one, and then lob one and lob two. So that's one of the things that, um, and so Alex, this is what you have to be aware of with that footage that I gave you. There will be times when there are two or three of those and you have to be selective because um, if you have the boom and a lav uh, at the same time, it'll seem very echoey or noisy. Um, so you want to, I personally only use the lavaliers for dialogue and then use the in a shotgun mic for everything else. Um, but they can't both be on at the same time because. Yeah. It, it, yeah, you can see here, like you can see in this section here, the, the boom mic is the top one. That was picking up whoever's talking. The middle one was a different person, probably across the room. Mm -hmm. So there's not much volume. And then you can see the bottom one is the lavalier of the guy, who, the person who was talking. It, can you, um, can we hear it if you play it? I don't know. Oh, uh, probably not. I got headphones on. I doubt it. Oh, okay. Because it'd be. I, 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 no, I don't think you share your sound. Can't hear it, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's it's one of those things that it'd be nice to hear, so you can see how noisy and bad it would sound. Oh yeah. Um, with all three of them turned up, and that was the question I was asking Tim: is that, um, can can you see them all? So it, it, it Premiere automatically shows them. Yeah, yeah, three channels. Yeah. Yeah, and you're uh, sorry. I'm lo I'm loading a project that has something like that. Let's see. Okay, let's. Assuming I do.
Maybe not. Okay. Uh, yeah, so realistically, um, okay, then uh, let me go back. So, so realistically, then it'll come in. Plus four errors, cool. Is that all you're seeing? You're just seeing an error message, right? Yeah. That's not right. There we All go. Right. Oh yeah, this was um, surprise. Surprise. <laughs> so let's see. It's Sorry, it's trying to load in a bunch of After Effects stuff. This ain't no mini rock, this a money dance in my dick game. All right, so we we got multiple levels here. Yeah, when it comes in, uh, you you're gonna just need to go through and select exactly the ones you want. You don't want to put on all, everything that's recorded because when you do, you're going to hear, you know, a good, bad, or ugly. Maybe someone on coughs on the boom mic, but yeah, definitely dialogue for uh, Zoom. And and what's interesting is we're able to adjust elements too. Like let's say, um, you can see, you can see when we get to here. Cool. We can see different elements layered on top of each other. And just like audio and video, uh, audio is not going to be dominant, though. The higher up will not mean you're dominant. Basically, all audio layered on top of each other, whatever one has the highest volume will be the dominant sound. Um, and, and by highest volume, it, record level is going to matter as, as well. So realistically, looking at a project like this, we need we can look at the waveforms and see whose intensity is the most. Uh, I'm going to be able to look at here and know like, oh, this is my audio, this is my music track. Which net and what's great about something like this, uh, I expected that to play something. But if I double click on my audio, I can click up here. I can see, um, I can see here, but also I can see like my keyframes. Um, oops, let me go right back here. I can see my keyframes to see what level it's at, and within the clip, I can maybe want want. Oh, my channel's muted. That's pr probably why. All right. Okay, so my my channel's right there. Um, I don't know what the, was this song in the actual piece, Grant? No. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, I don't know whose edit this is, but um, <laughs> it's Shoreline Mafia. Yeah, seems like a Grady uh, something, um, but. Let's click here and say like, I want my music to slowly fade out. Well, I can adjust my audio. Now I have a... So the art of audio really is mixing. Like our, we can see that like right here, we have the car noise, we have the dialogue going on here. And then we can go through and even adjust, make our edits, zoom on in be like okay here's our dialogue and then we can raise this louder but of course it's all the matter of like just finesse going in and making it sound natural and realistic the other thing to note is when we're layering audio if we clip our audio and that means we take our edit too early uh, our our spoken dialogue our spoken dialogue is going to sound bad. So you can hear it. I cut in the middle of his voice. So that's always something to think about is like when we're editing, does it sound proper? 
Um, and sometimes when you're working with multiple layers, like for my little corporate videos that I edit, I always love to put music because the music helps hide my audio edits in the piece. And sometimes based on the person, I'm going to have two, three, four, five, six, you know, I'm going to just put a sentence together. Maybe the person messed up saying one thing or another, but I'm going to hide with my video. I'm also going to hide with my audio by having a backing track. Now, in your movie, you aren't necessarily going to do that because having constant music in your piece isn't going to be good. But how do we make our movie sound natural? Well, we can see in this piece alone, even if we get rid of the, uh, the music, Okay, well, I messed up his audio there, so let's fix that a little bit. Here, why? We're going for a walk. Come on, I thought we were going to... Why? So we are using basically the ambient noise, too, to help hide the edits, right? Like, this is one continuous shot, too. Uh, when we go farther on... So realistically there we're using music to signify something uh, creepy is going on, but you're not gonna have music through your whole thing. So you go realistically are gonna wanna layer it to some background noise. So looking at this piece, what's the background noise? Well, it could be crickets, it could be just amb it's foley, ambient foley you're gonna put out there because anytime we don't, realistically, we wanna hide these edits. So right there, realistically, is a problem because we go from like hearing walking noises and hearing them properly to this missing section where there is a beat of a drum and it's signifying something. But yeah, this is distracting because why are we why aren't we hearing the foley of them walking at least? So that's mm -hmm. something that I would go through it, go and finish and put put into my edit. Um, and realistically, we're look, looking at something like this. We can see the multiple layers. We can see. We're getting the audio. We're getting the different layers of music mixed with sound effects layered on top of each other. We also looking at the different channels and we can see that like this channel right here is really low. It's probably just a scratch track. It's just a scratch track from probably the red's audio input. And because it's blue, we know it's linked to the, the video. Green comes in by itself. Uh, uh, blue means it's linked to a video. So realistically, when I'm editing this, most likely I'm just gonna mute all of these channels and be like, I, well, I don't wanna hear the camera's sound because what the red records, it really has a, uh, you know, the fan turns off but the, the Red's microphone is not designed to capture good scratch quality audio. It real, I mean, if we just listen to this track of audio, what it, they're outside and we're hearing scratching noises wherever they're talking. So um, realistically, I, I would either delete this or mute the channel. And basically you can just delete whole clips of audio um, uh, getting it back is a harder thing, but uh, looking at it now. Um, Jet, babe. Yeah, it's right. It was her idea. Oh, we got a chat. When they are in the car, why to video? Oh, I, I, what are you asking, Vernon? Why is it split screen? Yeah. Uh, great question. Uh, it wasn't like this in the movie, right, Grant? This is someone's no, I, I, I'll tell you why it was, um, uh, Derek was in the back seat oh. filming and you could see his reflection in the rear view mirror. So instead of um, one image where we were going to kind of 
figure out a way of blurring that image, um, they put two of the singles together and had it play that way. Uh, it's just a different way of doing it. Um, yeah, so you can see I turned off the crop. So the two layers on top of each other are basically laid on top and they added a crop effect. So we could see them both. Um, but in the, let's see, I probably have the wide shot here somewhere. Let's see. Uh, I'm just in the audio bin. Here's the video. This is definitely. Uh, let's do this wheel in project. All right, man in car. That's his singles. We also see where's the two shot? Maybe it's not labeled. Again, I'm working off someone else's project. Okay, yeah, it's not gonna be labeled here. Let's take a look. All right, so yeah, this is a good example. You look at look at the rear view mirror. So if, I'm gonna bring it into here. We'll take a look here. And let's go full screen. So realistically, why watching here? We can see Derek. Come on, I thought we were gonna <laughs> So one of those things where you could go ahead, I think we played around with trying to blur it and they realized uh, how hard keyframing something like that is. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of those things you need to take in consideration when working with mirrors and reflections and why it's a good learning experience. So that's why that element is layered like that. Speaking of that, um, if you, those of you who go to the premiere um, this weekend of the On the Couch, the whole room was of glass um, that had reflections. It was the biggest nightmare ever to film in that room because um, it uh, not just the reflections of the actors, but of all the lights and everything. And it was um you'll you'll see it's a cool looking room but what a a nightmare to 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 shoot in it okay so looking at this project we're going to look right here and we know that this is scene two take one right and so those of us who are in production class know that what is this called what the slate slate yep uh so our slate is right here. And what's the point of our slate? Well, it marks, it, it tells us what our scene, our take is, but also the yeah, clock. Now we're rolling. Oh. You did? Me too, take one. Yeah, that's the, the slate right there, the, cl the, the clap um, allows us to see a visual and audio interpretation of a sync point because like we can see right here, we're recording um, uh, a channel of audio right here. We can see, and also by looking in and seeing that snap, we see something that intentionally peaks, right? We get a red mark. This is a mark where we can actually use it to sync our sound. Now, what's interesting too is if we see this, the snap, We actually see that hear the clap before we see the snap all the way down, right? Why is that? Sound uh, travels faster than a light. So we're getting the audio just eight. This is one single frame faster. So we have a snap point right there. 
Uh, and what's great is we're going to then go to our audio. And we have to remember this is scene two, shot one. So let's go to our audio bin. Let's go to scene two. Scene three. Uh oh, did someone forget to roll audio on this one? Maybe it's not labeled properly. All right. A, a mic check. Scene check Perfect. one. Scene check one. Right here. Yeah. Oh. Okay. See. Okay. Well. I have found scene, I can't, I'm not, it's not jumping off the page. I'm not gonna waste my time finding it specifically, but uh, let's go to our video bit or uh, we got scene, scene two shot two. Let's find scene two shot two over here. Oh, I'm in the audio bin, that's my problem. Let's go to video bin and we're going to go. Oh, it's all labeled weird. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to cheat a tiny bit uh, just for <laughs> sake of timing. So let's look right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select all of this. We're going to go over here. Here, let's pull this take out. Let's pull this out. And I'm going to reveal this in my project. Okay. So this is, we can see that scene three, take one, or shot one, take four. So we can see, go into our audio clip and it's fine. Scene three, shot one, take four. I'm gonna click and drag it down here. Now, looking at this clip, knowing that I'm gonna use it, I can visually just look and see, I can see there's the, there's the, the sync point, but also looking here, just looking at this, I can see the visual representation of the audio sync. Now we're gonna make, uh, the blue of course is our camera's audio. Um, we can turn that on and we'll turn this off. We'll hear the snap right there, but also looking at, my, uh, of course, we're not going to hit record at the exact same time on our audio recorder and our, our camera. So our audio from our audio recorder might be longer, might be shorter, but what we do is we do that clap in order to make a sync point. So visually, I can go in here and I can go and find my, my, uh, oh. I can go in and find my sync point. And in fact, I'm gonna zoom in so I can see it better. And looking here, I'm gonna mute this channel, unmute here. I should be here able to hear a clap. All right, there's the clap. And visually, I'm gonna sync my audio right here without even looking at the video. So I'm gonna go frame by frame. And what's, what's useful is to turn off our snapping. S is the hot key to turn our snapping off. Let's do a little bit over one frame. All right, let's put the difference there. Visually, it might not be exact, but come out. The big key is how does it sound? Let's unmute it. So we hear both snaps at the same time. I'm gonna go here. Uh, anytime I sync my audio too, I'm going to do it visually like that. And I'm going to check. Let's mute it. Uh, mute the scratch track to hear this. All right, the snap looked good, but then I like to go somewhere where there's talking to make sure the lip sync is still good. Second box, you can still leave. No. 
I'm okay. Lip sync looks good here. I don't know how we're gonna just make it bigger. Ready? Oh, Oop. Jen. my bad, I clicked off of it. Let's go back to where I was. <laughs> Action. Action. They should be here soon. Okay, lip sync still looks good. So I just manually synced my audio and video using uh, the clapper um, in order to sync that. Well, uh, that took a little bit. You're gonna do that for every clip and every clip you choose. Um, but let me tell you something, technology's grand. This is how I used to do it. Technology's grand. Uh, what I can do now is I can import my clip. I can bring in my audio. I can select all of this and I can control click onto here. And then I'm gonna choose synchronize. I'm gonna oh, did I? <laughs> I think I didn't do it. Synchronize, uh, you can choose clip start, clip end, time code. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose audio. So it's gonna basically go through the channel uh, one of both what's recorded uh, and what's the scratched track in all of the, the audio that's selected. And if I hit OK, it is going to process. And um, essentially, it just manually sync the audio like I did. Um, which, I mean, that wasn't as impressive as I wanted to. So let's realistically watch, watch the sequence when I, when I synchronize it here. As you can see, the clip jumps into position. And uh, upon checking it, if you're having second thoughts, then you can still leave. What's, what's really interesting, too, is the sync will almost, uh, depending on how big your shot is. So let's say, realistically, let's say I'm like, OK, I want to use this clip. This is going to be fucking great. Yeah, it's fucking great. All right, this is gonna be effing great. Let's say, let's just say I made an edit and I put it in here and now I'm like, okay, well, I just used a scratch audio to make a rough edit. Uh, I'm working off my rough edit here. Okay, well, is this gonna work? Well, let's see. Let's see if Synchronize can pull from that much data. All right, my clip, or my clip disappeared. No, actually, it jumped to the position of. It's going to be fucking great. All right. So I actually went through, and I'm able to sync my audio that way. So so maybe I accidentally deleted my clip. Uh, I want to resync my audio. Now, the only thing I do want to caution about this is the less and less information, the more information you get it, the better synchronize will work. Um, uh, but the smaller the information, the more likely you might encounter a mistake. Um, what's great too is maybe you have multiple cameras with all recording scratch audio um, and uh, multiple channels. We could select everything and it'll all sync together. In fact, we are syncing based off of uh, this scratch audio here matching with this um, uh, audio recorded from the audio recorder here. Now, this is why it's important and why I suggest, even if it is a bad uh, microphone on your camera, always record scratch audio. Because if you didn't have any scratch audio, let's, let's say, for example, we recorded with no audio or the camera just didn't record anything, like you didn't have the microphone plugged in, you'll just get a blue nothing. Well auto synchronize won't work because there's no reference for it to do it. If I, if I select these two clips and I say synchronize and it's going to say, well, I can't do audio because there's only one audio track. So you could go by time code or you could go by clip end or start. That's the only way to synchronize. If I do clip start, all it's going to do is line everything up from the start of the audio to there. That's not really helpful. Uh, you're not going to hit everything start at the same time. Um, so realistically, it's good to know how to do it manually because I'm going to look at my sync point right here, right? So I'm gonna go with my video and be like, okay, well, 
right here is where my visual sync is. And then I'm going to go get my audio sync point, my clap. Here. And I got a question. Yep. Will it work if you're um, you have multiple clips and you like, let's say you you want to synchronize a audio clip and it's in between multiple clips. Um, will it work that way or will it move your clips in a way? Because sometimes I've done it and it doesn't it doesn't apply to the to the video. So yeah, like I'm talking about like a video like that. Yeah, I'm absolutely going to show you what happens. All right. Now, can you make the, the audio uh, bigger? Move on. You want to see the audio? So like, expand, like expand like the whole like clip of the audio? Oh, yes. Because sometimes I do it and it just doesn't. All right. So basically what I have here is I have these clips and I want to sync this audio, right? We'll even make it bigger. Yeah, like that, make it bigger. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, I want to go by audio, right? And what's interesting is it'll even give you track channels. So for example, if I said track two, but I only recorded on track one, it, will, it won't synchronize. Uh, and so let's say, okay. Now, what's interesting is it did jump the audio because the video was, was dominant up here. Yeah. Um, uh, because it's locked in. Uh, but what happens if we put this on a different channel? Let's just mess this up, for example. So I had put it on a blank channel where there is plenty of room Oops, sorry. Let me just put it up here. All right. So now we have these two and this. What happens if I try to synchronize here? Uh, it won't even let me do that. Well, let me do it because it's on the same channel. So let's put on a different channel. Oops, I moved all my audio by accident. Let's put that back. All right, let's select those. I'm so, and just so you know, I'm selecting by clicking and dragging those clips, and I'm holding the shift button to select a third element. Uh, that allows me to select instead of if if I click and drag and try to select, it's going to select every single it, thing in here, and that won't work. So I'm select I'm selecting this and selectively selecting this, and I'm going to say synchronize. Let's see what happens. Covers everything. It, the video stayed in the right place, but my audio ended up uh, deleting everything on there. So it kind of insert ed it edits it there. So that's something to know. So I always, when I do something like this, I always put my audio on a new track so that I have areas to work around. So I don't mess up any of my old edits. Make sense? Yeah. All right. Jim, what about, um... Uh, so we use time code. So can you, I'm not sure if we did recorded time code on this one, but, um, cause I'm not sure which red this was, but, um, uh, yeah, you, you can, you can definitely sync via the time code element too. Let's look at, let's take a look and just see if you're running time code on, uh, your slate is going to have your time code, right? Yeah. I think uh, you're running time code. It showed on the original, that clip that. Over there, yeah. We can just find a clip. Let's see. Yep, running time code. Yeah, but that. But I'm not sure if the 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 slate jammed sync. the camera. So I am look. Yeah, it looks like it's right. Uh, because it's one forty four thirty nine right there off by two frames looks like. Um, so realistically, if we're going by time code, uh, is this the audio for this? All right, I should have picked a clip that I could just find an easy reference. Here, let's just choose this. All right, let me just 
just select this. I'm just not going to waste my time by reorganizing. Let's just pretend. Oh, here, we can use this original clip. All right, so we have our time code there. So I think the time code, yep, the time code matches on your video, but let's see on our audio. Oh, it matches on our audio too. So you can see the time code matches right there. And what I can do is then select this and say, um, uh, synchronize, and I can go by time code. And looking at my clapper time code, I can just type it in, uh, 0241. Three eight one zero, and boom. You have to actually type it so in. If you're running, your, you have to uh, type in time code. It doesn't do it sync it automatically. Great question. Yeah. That's what it's supposed to do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So time code works as well. Action. So that's even better because if you have time code sync on your audio and video, then you don't, then you can put in, you don't even need the audio element. So if it's a quiet scene or it's just ambient noise, it, you won't have to base yourself on the ambient edit. Mm -hmm. uh, I rarely ever work with the time, I'm never fortunate enough to work with the time code sync grant, which is great to have that on a set. So um, keep that in mind. Yeah, so all of our projects have it. So um, Alex, that's what you should be doing. Uh, David, Joe, I mean, that just will save you tons of time. Yeah. So then something like this, we're layering in sound effects, we're layering in music. Look at his face. Multiple channels, let's see. So we can see like, oh, that sounds a little loud in the edit. So we're gonna find this sound effect. So we can go in and adjust this by going in and just bringing the audio down a little bit. Let's see. Working with. Look, we have mul we're working with multiple sound effects there. So layering it to make it really sound realistic. Different, different, you know, you have to, in the Foley class you learn, uh, or the audio class, you learn about how layering makes things sound more realistic, right? Alone, it sounds cartoony, um, but you're gonna layer it and everything's gonna be at different layers. That's why sound mixing is a, uh, a an Academy Award uh, winning uh, event because you need to be able to mix everything together. Uh, and you can view it here. We also look at our audio mixers here. We can look at this and see all of the different things. And just like our, uh, if we click over here, we can be like, okay, I'm gonna bring this channel up a little bit, that channel down a little bit and listen to it and mix it that way. Those are all individual channel audios specifically. Let's take a look at, um, this is audio channel four, uh, which is right here. Let's bring that up, see what happens. Makes it a lot louder. Or we can take audio channel four. So we actually can see when I adjust this, I'm adjusting whatever clip is in audio channel right now. And what's interesting about volume two is we can actually even mess with uh, our stereo. So we can pan it and it right, panning it right means it goes to the right side. Watch, watch the audio meter. All right, let's just mute everything else. Mute, 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 mute. And audio level four, we don't want to mute it. Okay. So I panned it to the right. All right. I can pan it more to the right. All right, all to the right. So now that I panned it to the right, oh, we're still hearing audio clip. But this clip alone, we're only seeing it on our right channel here. We 
hear the noise before the, the audio hit. But it's realistic because the audio edit goes to black before we actually hear that. So, but just know that like you can pan if you are creating a stereo thing where you want it to be on the right side of the theater or the left side of the theater, you can mess with all of those elements. Last thing I want to talk about uh, for just the basics of audio, we talked syncing, we talked volume. Um, let's talk about our audio effects. Uh, and what's interesting here in Premiere, we have a lot of different audio effects to mess with. Let's start with our transitions first and foremost. Now, a basic audio transition is a fade. Uh, here we have constant gain, constant power, and constant uh, exponential fade. Uh, so let's work with music uh, really realistically to see this. So these three edits basically allow us to dissolve. Uh, if we put it at the end of a clip, Oh, it's muted. So, so a constant power is a very moderate fade. It's going to drag equal amounts from the source and the end. So think of how we talked about our video fades. When we put it in the middle of something, it equally took a cross dissolve, equally took from the clip to the left and the clip to the right to create a dissolve that meets in the midpoint where they're equal, they have an equal amount and then the other one becomes dominant. Well, if you do that at the, a clip, at the end of a clip, uh-oh. Oh, I lost my, uh, hold on, I lost my uh, uh, mouse. Uh, let me get a new mouse. Lost his mouse. What? <laughs> How do you lose your mouse? Is that... it, it, the US, it decharged. My USB mouse uh, <laughs> ran out of power. How do you lose your mouse? Come on, give me a break. Come on, Tim. I'm trying to use doing it. Doing this during class. Yeah, pretty embarrassing, right? <laughs> That's what happens when you ignore. Uh... Sometimes when you watch too much Shrek. Well, is there really too much Shrek? Is the bigger question? Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, that's where all of you were incorrect. All right, good. <laughs> okay, I, got, I got a less fancy mouse now. Uh, my magic mouse is out of power. That's the true magic. Um, oh, and I messed up my head. Oh, my, uh, I messed it up. Okay. There's my, <laughs> I drew <laughs> sequence up here. There we go. Oh, wait, no, I don't want to do that. I guess I'll do this. Great. All right. The great mouse. Uh, what was I talking about? Uh, effects. Effects. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So our, our constant power is going to be a general fade. Now, what's interesting, too, is you can fade between audio. So realistically, why would I want to do that? Well, one okay realistically what if i want to edit my music to sound different well we can realistically go in and take take our clip and if i take this i'm going to hit the dissolve these cross dissolves at the end i'm going to say all right let's just mute that and I'm gonna drag this here. I'm gonna be in the middle of the clip. I want my audio to be something like this, some ambient noise. I'm gonna butt these two up here. Let's just scrub down so it's easier to see. And then I'm gonna put a constant power in here. Now, again, constant power is gonna draw equally from this side to that side. So you need a tail. So let's hear what this sounds like. Well, I, I intentionally chose something that wasn't going to be good. It, it was kind of be noticeable. This sound kind of, yeah, you can, you can fade between songs, but realistically you don't want to fade like on a beat or anything that's too, you really like any edit, you want to make your edits as invisible as possible. And I feel like this edit would be distracting. Um, I only point this out to show you what, why would you would use this? Um, 
again, uh, what's good is like, well, what what if I, I want my song to fade out? Well, putting putting a constant power at the end of your song can create uh, a constant power is usually defaulted to about a, a second. Um, and what you can do is you can click and drag and make it longer or shorter. OK, great. Um, so Tim, uh, hold, what on, I'm... hold on one second, please. Yeah, she can come in here. Okay. I might have to wipe a butt, Grant. So uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'll keep you up. No, no worries at all. This is what happens. So uh, one of the things that we often do um, is we'll have a song that we like um, or you know, music. Um, and uh, we want to and think of horror films, that there are peaks, places where the, the music needs to be more intense or it needs to tail off or whatever. So oftentimes what we take a song and we cut it up um, into pieces and put more intense sections in, in some parts of the, the film and more mellow parts or less intense parts. And then you, you basically are fading them together, you're blending them together. So it seems like it's kind of seamless. Um, I do that constantly. I'll take a song and I will put it together. I think of it about it, a, a, another thing. Just the other day, I made a um, birthday tribute film for my mother-in-law. And um, I had, I don't know, like 500 pictures of her throughout her life. And we wanted to use these two songs. Well, it was, the songs weren't long enough. So I actually took the song, doubled it, and then blended them together. And you'd never know that it, I added an extra 32 seconds of the song. Um, it, act, it seemed like I, there was a, just a couple more verses or, or whatever. You can do that with music very easily by blending them or, or you know, fading in between an, um, the, the songs. Um yeah, for my corporate videos that I make, I genuinely, I generally, in fact, I'm sure I did it on some of these. Um, I'll go in and I will find a, a sync point, a beat where, look, my my clip was either too short or sometimes the songs are too long. And I specifically, oh, that's a bad one. Um, let's see. Okay, this is a good example, I think. At all. All right, so here with this song, I know for a fact I wanted, uh, most songs have a natural ending, right? So if we mute all of this, this is a cauliflower mashed potatoes. Enjoy. Um, so see how it has kind of a upbridge uh, kind of natural end to that? Well, my song is four minutes long and my video is only two minutes. Well, I just naturally went in and made a cross dissolve here that's not even very good, uh, but I definitely chose a good point to hide it because uh, uh, when it's fully edited, the most of all healthy cauliflower garlic mashed potatoes. Mark and Lady yours. You never can even hear the audio edit because of the he's talking over my audio edit. So so realistically, if I wanted to go in and finesse it and to where the beat is completely noticeable, I would find most like corporate songs or songs follow a pattern right you you have the the four beats um and if you cut on one of those beats you should be able to merge your audio pretty easily without even needing a crossfade most of the time does that make sense yep yeah. all right exponential fade is just a different type of fade as actually a good one to put at an end of a song it's more of a steep uh fade up or fade down those are our transitions. Concept gain uh, is uh, more of a slower dissolve up. And also if you keyframe your volume, you can create your own dissolves. We, do you think those are easier to use those audio transitions? Because I normally keyframe it. It depends on exactly what you're doing. Um, like if I'm ending a song, I'll use exponential frame, but uh, exponential fade, or I'll use a cross dissolve if I'm, if it's something that's like really low. Most of the times I keyframe. Uh, 
Uh, it's just, uh, I like having the control specifically. I like keyframing when there's a lot more things going on. But again, if I'm trying to turn four videos in one day, maybe I'm using uh, cross dissolves more, more often than keyframes. It just depends on the amount of time and effort I'm putting into something. Yeah. They're, they're definitely there for ease of use. Uh, lots of different, uh, lots of different audio uh, 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 effects here that you can use, uh, including um, all manners of way to improve quality of sound. This is actually um, compression amplitude. Uh, a lot of these dynamics will allow you to add volume, add bass, um, take out uh, DS or allow you remove S sounds. Uh, civilids, this is from your sounds. Um, uh, uh, there is delay and echo. Uh, this is realistically, if you want to add to like music and stuff, you can add delay, uh, putting together music video type of thing. Filter and EQ. Again, this is all audio sweetening. I, I, I encourage you all to just go through and play with these. Um, uh, to mess with the sound with it, it's one of those I can walk you through. Uh, basically, if you're messing with audio, I think the bet uh, I just want to introduce all of these, and then when we get into our lab section, you have questions. I can walk you through individual effects if you have that issue you want to deal with. Um, I think the the best thing, Tim, might be the ones that um, are most used. Instead of going through all of them, like the noise reduction is one that. Um, Absolutely. So noise noise reduction is really great, and one that I use all the time is this. Uh, uh, um, here we go. Where is it? Noise -noise. reduction. Denoise is great. It it finds the noise uh, in a piece, and in fact, let's let me showcase this. I almost always use denoise. Uh, let's see. All right. Let me just take this audio here. At half of the florets to start. I'm going to add some chicken stock. So when he's not doing anything, I am hearing, I don't know what you can, but let me turn up. There's an air conditioning noise in the background. I'm going to click denoise and just drop this on here. Denoise automatically searches your, uh, your clip. Add some chicken stock and reduces the common noise. A little bit of salt. So you can hear that. Again, uh, this one's great, a uh, quick and easy, but you can go in and change. So I'm gonna click here. Now I'm hearing only what's being taken out of here and I can actually adjust how much or how little uh, specifically. So this is 100%. I'm taking that noise completely out. Now I'm going to turn this off to hear what it sounds like. We're only going to use about half of the florets to start. So what I notice is his voice is getting a little tinny though, because I, because when you're knocking out the noise, you're taking out some of the bass or so, so where the noise is. So you have to just like ride the line. Now, uh, realistically, uh, there's great de-hummer, de-reverb, and click remover. Click remover is when there's like an audio click. Yeah, Grant. So uh, what I do personally is I do a combination of a denoise uh, filter. Um, um, and yeah, EQ as well. But the other thing I do is I keyframe. If there's some really bad noise, like um, in that classroom scene, there was a really loud air conditioner and I denoised, but then I actually, keyframe so I have the volume um, that I like for the audio and then I fade out um, when they're, he's not speaking and then I I and and I fade out slowly as he's not speaking because um, you know the sound carries for a second and then I come up strong just as he starts to speak and so I'm keyframing up and down and a combination of turning the, the, the bad noise down and using a filter can often fix um, audio that's really bad. And, and fixing and sweetening your audio can be a process that takes a large amount of time. That's why video production filmmaking 
takes forever because all of these elements can be finessed. And it's it's not like one, one click and drag might fix it a little bit, but it's not a solution. If you realistically want to make something perfect, you're going to sit there and like Grant said, go up and down, mess. Uh, as he was talking, I was keyframe. I can keyframe this effect and turn it on and off so that like a little bit of salt. A little bit. So I, the noise start, I, I made the noise go, uh, the D noise went from zero to a hundred percent. So it, we could hear it at the start and then go all the way to the end. So like anything, you can keyframe anything in Premiere. You just have to get into these effect controls and turn your keyframes on and mess with it. And, and I'm actually talking about keyframing the volume. So. Yeah, that too. Well, I mean, here's the volume right here is the channel volume is you can keyframe that as well. I'm just saying there's tons of elements that you can sit and keyframe through. EQ is a great one that'll help uh, uh, choose the quality, uh, which is- EQ uh, takes practice, by the way. Um, all, all of these do. That's why, that's why it's really important to sit and just mess with ones and figure out the ones you like because knowing how to do it. I mean, there's reverb, you can add, uh, reverb so it sounds you can uh here's left and right you can in oh here let's invert his audio this should be fun let's go ahead and process we can use about half of the florets to start Wait, hold on a second is that going florets to start well, that's not working right for me tonight. I will investigate. Um, vocal enhancer is a fun one that I mess with sometimes. You can put this on and it- We're only gonna use about half of the florets to start. Again, you can hear it sounds more tinny. It's gonna add some chickens. There's par parameters in here, like high tone mode. You can uh, go low Stop. tone. uh design for audio just a ton of them where you can mess with it uh time and pitch pitch shifter is always fun that's kind of more what i was thinking of and what we're going to use about all right let's shift uh ken's pitch all right so in honor of uh in honor of uh, the chipmunks, this is what they were doing to make the chipmunk. Uh, uh, they just shifted the pitches of the singers to make the chipmunks. Spoiler alert, they're not real. Um, uh, balance mute and volume. Uh, you can mute the whole channel by dropping that on there. You can balance your audio from left to right um, if you have uh, separate audio channels. All right, any questions or comments about any of these elements, I really just suggest that you go ahead and play with all of these to figure out what you like. Um, if you have any questions on specific ones, I can go through them. I mess with most of these uh, uh, and I know which ones I like and use uh, more often than not. I have a curious question. When, like when you get edit a movie with, with music and sound, would you say you spend more time on the sound or more time on the video? Well, just out of curiosity, 50 50? Uh, it really depends on what uh, is in the scene. Like, you could, I mean, is it a high visual movie? Is there a lot of special effects? Do I have, it, oh, yeah. Am I doing a time Dude, machine where right. I have to keyframe a car's window out for, uh, for, <laughs> for a minute's worth of the film? And I've learned that how much keyframing really stinks when I'm masking <laughs> something and how, how uh, it's, you have to really be intentional and why a Marvel movie takes years and years to do scenes because they have to put, you know, Sweet. Iron Man in every scene in the Hulk. Um, uh, so okay. realistically, it depends. I mean, uh, Grant on the couch, what took longer? audio um uh and it's because on the couch is not a visually complex film um and so and, and 
things like color, you know, I, I sent that off to have, you know, Chris do that. So it's basically, um, it, you know, a, a, a simple video edit, it, but getting the audio to sound good um, is super problematic. It was a noisy room. There was traffic, there were airplanes, there were, and when you want to cut back and forth and there's an airplane in one and there's no, uh, you know, sound or not only that, but we would um, turn the microphones in one direction and we'd get a very different noise. And then when you turn it in the other direction, because um, the, the direction of noise and the microphones. And so that was problematic. Um, the big thing in, on the couch was um, we were picking up so much movement from the lavaliers, you know, the rustling noise, and yet the shotgun mics were picking so much ambient sound that that was not usable. So when you watch, you know, that's the thing that I cringe when watching uh, on the couch is um, there's some uh, rustling noises um, that I spent hours and hours and hours and hours trying to hide and fix and find solutions. Um, and so, yeah, audio to me, it, it, uh, you don't think about audio when you're recording so much, but if you don't do a good job, it means absolutely. I mean, that's why over 90% of audio that you see in major motion pictures is done in, in post the yeah. you know adr and foley um is the the va vast majority of the audio in you know the, the movies and major television shows that we watch yeah the whole fix it in post motto is just a night it is real like hey this isn't my problem this is someone else's problem but when you're low no budget filmmaker you know that like uh future tim or present tim uh really hates future tim and past tim at the same time so it's tim present tim always needs to be kind to future tim and do the work then so that when future tim becomes present tim present tim doesn't hate hey yeah, joe you you explain the time travel in stuff in the team <laughs> This Tim scenario he's talking about because Tim films and then later on, Tim, uh, future Tim is the ed editing. Um, yep. So yeah, it, it's you have to if you don't do a good job while um, on set and recording, you're going to pay for it later by having you know um, we had to have Paola come over for an ADR session and Tom's going to come. That was because we didn't get it right when we recorded in the TV studio. And there were problems in the TV studio because there are fans and air conditioners outside. And, and then the main thing was the we didn't do a good job of covering the lav. And so every time Tom moves, it sounds like there's a giant earthquake it's <laughs> because of the rustling noises. Yeah, yeah now I'm spending hours and hours trying to make the boop, boop for the looping session. So yeah. It's a lot of time yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. It, it's it's one of you know the adage garbage in, garbage out type of thing is like, you know, you can polish or you can shine a um they shine a turd, but it's still a turd, right? Uh it's one of those things where it's like you want to put in the effort everywhere, uh, especially in filmmaking, because you you can see it. And and realistically, if uh if your arm gets chopped off, you can put a Band-Aid on it, but the arm's still gone, right? Yeah, and, and, it, and it goes for every, and we're, tonight's audio, but it, the same thing with lighting. If you don't light it well, then later on you can try to fix it with color and, and cut around things, but there's a problem. If you, um, don't, you know, if you don't keep things in focus, you have issues later. If you, I mean, it's every single, aspect of filmmaking you have to pay attention to. And if you ignore one of them, and audio gets ignored a lot. How, how many times, how many times, um, David, have you been behind the mixer and you say, oh, wait a minute, I hear a, a plane or something and everyone's, ah, oh, it's okay, no, you know. Yep, okay. I've been completely ignored. Yep. Yeah. And then later, those same people go to edit their films, or what the hell, this audio is terrible. 
Well, you were saying, wait a minute, uh, there are audio issues. Um, that happens all the time. And some things we can fix or, or make better, um, but some things you just have to re-record. And that's what you're dealing with now with the, uh, the looping sessions um, oh, yeah. for Tom. But now we're talking about editing. Do you have any other questions for Tim about uh, audio in Premiere? Or any general editing questions? We're kind of in the... Uh... I got another one. How did you get... I don't get opacity on my video like you were showing. I don't see that. Is, so, that, a, is that something you, you set up or is that default? Okay, let me show you. I, I know exactly. This is a great question. Mm, uh, I got to share probably so you can see it. Okay, here we go. There we go. Let's look right here. Okay. So this line is what you're trying to see, right? Okay. Well, the line only shows up if you give it enough room. Oh, do that. So look, these small ones, which are probably the default, don't have the line. I give it room and I still don't have it. You still don't have it? Uh-uh. You might have to go to the toolbox to add it to it right there on the- I uh, was wondering if it's a setting somewhere. Right there with the- No, I, I did it the other day. All right, let me just think. Go to that tool, that tool icon right there under the um, other one now. Yeah. Is oh, your show, yeah, Joe? Yeah, yeah, okay. You have yeah. it, Joe, on yours? Yeah, I have it on mine. It, it's on oh. this box right here. You have to add. Uh, yeah, the, the, see the little wrench? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's going to do uh, show video keyframes. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. See, so, yeah, I turned it off. And okay. then is uh, is uh, Sophie still here? Yep. Because if I say show video thumbnails, this allows me to sh now show, like if I have them big enough, I can actually see visual representations of the, uh, it's gonna show me the first frame basically. Okay. I, I know in iMovie you kind of can scrub through and see what it is, but uh, here this gives me at least the thumbnails. I don't like working with that, but uh, again, we can see show audio names. Um, wow. But see, uh, David, if you if you were to like mess with like the speed, because I know sometimes I'll I'll lower down the speed of, of a clip halfway and then keyframe it back up, it gets yeah. rid of it gets rid of that line. I like this. Minimize all tracks. Uh, it's, um, and then what's interesting too, is you can manage your presets and uh, make your own preset, save it as a preset. So that when you come in, it must've got turned off and just that's what you've been living with. We lose Tim. No, he's still there. Hey, Tim. Yep. I have another silly question. Uh, I love silly questions. Uh, it's something I do all the time, and I, I'm embarrassed. I don't know how to get when I like accidentally drag and drop like the timeline up to where you see the video. Yep. The whole window. Like this. Yeah. How do you get back? How do I get back? I always go to workspaces and default. You just drag it back down. Let me make it look so easy. <laughs> I did that. I was like, how the hell do I get it back down? Yeah, what's wrong? Oh, you know where was mommy? Okay. Thanks. Yeah, mommy will be right back. She went to go pick up Cha Cha. Okay, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so yeah, realistically, I, I mean, I did that in class too. I actually dragged it up here. And if you just drag it back, now just note though, uh, David, 
when I mess it up and I put it up here, you yeah. want to drag it so it's the center option. If you put it here or there, if I put it up here, it's going to, um, oh, well, that, that worked. That, <laughs> that didn't work just, the way I wanted it to work. Um, realistically, I was hoping it would do this, which it made, it, it put another window next to um, the sequence window. So now I have two sequences open. Um, realist, but realistically, listen to this. There is a great reason to use two sequences. And sometimes I will do this, is sometimes I'll sync something and then I will go through and pull good clips and throw them onto a top sequence. Ah, that way I don't have to click and drag it to the end of another sequence. So I'm just chop, chop, boom, chop, chop, boom, chop, chop, boom. And mm. that way I can pull all my good takes and realistically, I'm sure you've all cut and then went over and pasted and went back and back and back. This is, I love to, you know, I, I love to be able to, uh, let me get my blade tool. C for cut, all right. All of you there. I'm gonna do my edit. And then there I can just click and drag it up here. And, and then it just copies and pastes it up there. That's cool. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, right? Yeah. Any other questions? I love silly questions. I'm trying to think of one. I know I had a question for you this week. I'm not to get back to you on that. I'm going to stop the recording.